artists, subscribers to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to correctly render roads in your artwork, whether it be a drawing or a painting. And I find that roads can be a bit tricky. I actually tried to find some things online myself to simplify it a bit, and I had a hard time. So I did some research, and I came up with my own technique and way to teach how to correctly render roads in your artwork. Now, it could be roads, paths, trails, um, little streams, anything that meanders through a landscape, and I'll be breaking down and showing you how to get it right perspectively. And uh, it should be fun and really easy, so I hope to simplify road drawings and paintings for you in a real easy and concise way. All right, let's do this. In order to get started with painting and drawing roads, we need to understand the basics. So we're gonna go back to some core perspective principles, and I apologize if this is a little elementary, but we really need this grounded in our education and knowledge before we can move any further. So I'm gonna talk about some simple perspective rules and then we're gonna get going. Uh, I'm using right now just a piece of paper um, on my board and these Tombow dual brush pens. I really like these for doing little value studies and uh, they're just nice little uh, uh, different values of markers that I'm gonna use. So here's a basic breakdown of one point perspective. Most of us have done the example in school, you know, even early kindergarten, first grade, of the typical one point perspective example. Let's do a horizon line. Then we have a vanishing point that's gonna happen somewhere on the horizon line. And the vanishing point, let's just do it super easy, right in the middle, and let's make our road just the typical road that we do. Like I said, many of you have done this. We've got our lines in our road that are gonna gradually get smaller and uh, closer together as it recedes in the distance. All right, so in order to understand this, I'm the type of person where I wanna know why. <laughs> I probably drove my mom crazy with that, and you know, my oldest son did the same thing, and that was back before we had the internet, and I probably would've loved the internet when I was young. <laughs> I could've got all my questions answered. So now I have the internet, and I can explore things. All right, so why is there a vanishing point? Now let's imagine we are going up into the air. You can be in an imaginary helicopter, or you can pretend that you're flying. So I'm gonna pretend I'm flying, all right? I'm gonna fly up and above this road scene. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna look the way our heads normally look straight ahead. I'm gonna look down at this road. Now, if we were to look straight down, if you're in a helicopter, you have to have a glass bottom to do this. <laughs> and we're gonna look at the same road. Now we're assuming this is just a, a, a straight road, no curves in this road, okay, for this example. So here's our road, we're looking down at it. Do you notice a vanishing point, anything like that? No, because when we are looking at something from above, as in this case, all we have is parallel lines. Even if there were buildings here, cars here, if there was a car on the road and it's traveling, the, the lines are going to be parallel on the car. And if a car was on the road here, there would be a uh, vanishing point uh, or there would be um, the lines of the car would behave with respect to the vanishing point. You'd have your wheels. and so, so in this case, a car, the angles of the car, even though we know it's a straight line, would follow the same angles according to the principle of one point perspective with the vanishing point. In this case, it's parallel lines. So now, in this case, we're gonna fly back down to the road and we're gonna come down a little bit higher than the car. We're floating still a little bit here. We're not quite standing on the ground. And we're going to look towards the horizon. And that is when we see the illusion of the road meeting the vanishing point. It doesn't actually happen. If we kept walking down the road, we'd, we'd never get to that vanishing point. It's an illusion. So that's what we're doing in our paintings is we're creating the illusion of depth that 
happens in nature according to the laws of physics. So I think that's really cool, and I think that really breaks it down kind of easy as to what we're doing. Now, the next thing I'd like you to keep in mind, this is the very simple part of the lesson here, very elementary, is to imagine our canvas, drawing paper, drawing surface, or even my little um, landscape format that I'm doing, is imagine it as a viewfinder on a camera. And this viewfinder of the camera is going to change the horizon line where it is based on how you move the camera or how high up you are in the scene or if you get down on the ground. I mean, even just try that with your camera. That's how the horizon line changes in a painting or in real life. Now, I did some examples of that this morning out in my uh, behind my house with my cow pasture that's beside my house where I love my little neighbor's cows. And I took my camera literally. I stayed at eye level and the horizon line was more like at a human eye level. Then I just turned my camera up and the horizon line lowered. Turned my camera down, the horizon line raised up. Now I can change my perspective. Now because I couldn't fly up in the air, I decided to get down lower on the ground. I actually love paintings where you're down low like that and you see the, like the roots of the flowers. Now when you get down low on the ground, the horizon line gets lower. It follows where your eyes are. Now I could once again turn my camera as if I was turning my head up to look at the sky. The horizon line gets lower. And then if I look down, the horizon line gets higher. And of course, my dog Jackson looks like a giant. He's just waiting for me to throw his ball. He loves that. So now we understand a little more about why one point perspective works the way it does, but we wanna create some roads that are a bit more interesting than these elementary types of roads. Let's add some bends to these roads. All right, this should be fun. Now very quickly, I'm just writing down the five steps. This is kind of like you do in school. You just take the notes and then when I explain it, it will make more sense. But number one is the horizon line. We have to establish that. Number two, we have to establish where does the road begin? Number three, we want to know what's the final destination of the road? Where is it going to end? Now, after we establish that, we need to really kind of think about when the road begins, how big is that road and what direction is it going to initially start out in? This will make a lot more sense as we do some of these. Number four, how many bends are gonna be in our road? Do you want it really curvy? Just no bends or maybe just one bend? And then we have to do the same thing that we did in number two. We kinda of have to determine where's the placement of the bend and what direction is it going to go in? Then we can finally move on to step number five, which I like to just call triangles. We're gonna be creating a lot of triangles here. And I'll first start out with some simplified examples and then we'll add a bit more complexity. All right, here we go. I'm going to do one over here on this side. Let's see if I can keep this in the camera frame. All right, so what's the first thing we wanna do? Number one, horizon line. Let's do it upper third, okay? Number two, where is our road gonna begin? I'm gonna use the lighter marker um, until I draw the final road. Let's make our road, I keep doing them over here. Let's do, let's do it over here. We'll have our road begin here. Um, and what size and direction do we want it to go? It's starting here, but let's make it a pretty wide road coming in or trail you know, or path. Let's have it in the final destination. I know I want the road to go here. Now I have to determine with this road, we've got the size. How do I want, do I want it to curve a little this way? Do I want it to start going this way? Well, because the final destination's over here, I think I want my road to kind of start here and meander that way. So if, if the direction of the road, we've got the size, it's gonna be pretty wide. If the direction of the road is gonna kind of go that way, we're just gonna make an away point, you wanna call it that, <laughs> um, for the beginning direction of the road. And the dotted lines are because these are just to get perspective right. Now, we've got our horizon line, we've got the beginning part of the road, the size and the direction. How many bends do we want? Let's do two bends, okay? So let's do the first one, and that's how we're going to start creating these triangles. Let's do the first bend right about here, all we do is make a horizontal line. 
Let's bend it one time here. I want it to kind of bend that way. And let's have a second bend. This one's gonna have two bends. Let's bend the next one, oh, right about here, let's say. So we're making another triangle. All right, so now I can see where this road goes. Look, we got it here. We've got it coming here, and we've got it coming here. And as I keep saying, I don't often have such uh, precise lines for my roads. They're often trails with grasses and rocks and things on the side, so you don't have such a stark line, but this is for the example here. All right, let's do another one and follow the same rules. I'm gonna zoom out. Let's do a big wide one. Am I in the thing? Nope, let me go like right here. All right, we got a nice wide landscape here. Let's do this one kind of low. So we've got, what's that number one? Horizon line. Where do we want our road to begin? Let's start this one kind of in the middle. How, how wide do we want it? The size? Let's make it pretty wide. And the direction, again, I keep kind of skipping. I, I really need to kind of go here and then work this all kind of together. So the final destination, I'm gonna make way over here, okay? Now, the size and the direction, we've got the size, what direction do we want it to start in? I want it to start with a real big curve this way and then go back this way. So I'm gonna make my, my first direction, my first um, way this road starts to bend or curve is going that way. Now, let's give it two bends. We're going to play, what placement? Let's, let's start the first bend kind of early in the road. Let's bend it a little bit here. Now, we create our triangle. We determined the placement and the direction of the bend. And let's bend the last one. We could do three or four, you know, but I find usually, usually two, two bends is good. Okay, and the last one's gonna sweep way, well, you know what, let's do another one. Let's do one here just to show how it would work. And then let's do our last one. Whoop, that's not real good. Way over here. Well, I didn't get that real good. Let's go. This one's hard because it's so thin there. All right, now we can draw this road. We've got our road kind of coming up, curving around, making a sharp curve. And you could choose, I'm gonna end my final destination because I didn't draw it too good. You can choose how jagged you want your road, how curvy you want your road. There's lots of different things that you can do. Um, but this one had three bends and it took me uh, one, two, three, four really total triangles to create those bends. All right, let's do one more. And with this one, let's do something interesting here. I'm gonna start the horizon line in the lighter marker. Okay, let's do the horizon line like right here. All right, now with this one, I wanna start the road. Uh, now I've, I've got my horizon line. Where do I want it to begin? I'm gonna make this like a, a road that's going around a mountain. I wanna start it not at the bottom of the composition here. I wanna start it kind of coming in from the side, okay? So we've got a road that's gonna kinda come in this way. So I, my final destination, I want back here, okay? So I've got my horizon line here, where the road begins, here and here, okay? I want it coming in. I've got my size right there. I've got my direction of the first, first initial direction of the road, and I've got my final destination, okay? Now, we'll determine how many bends in a minute, but let's first make this road sweep this way. That's the first direction of the road. So we're gonna sweep this road way over there, okay? Now, here's what's interesting. I wanna make a mountain that this road is curving around, okay? So here's my final point the road's gonna curve to, but let's make like, um, there's like a, a big mountain here in the way, all right? And so now what I can do is I can choose where I want this bend to be, and I want it to be kind of right here at the crux of the mountain, and I can bend this road literally behind the mountain. 
uh, behind the, the rock or whatever this is. So we could make the road go around something that's blocking it by the same rules. So now let's go ahead, um, we'll do the big mountain. There's a rock. All right, now we've got our horizon line. That's why I dotted the horizon line in is because I wanted to let the rock be in the way of it. And so now we've got a road that went around a mountain. Basically, okay? So you can do anything you want if you use these rules. So again, you just determine, let's do a real skinny tall one. Let's make it way up here. Horizon line. Where's our road gonna begin? Let's make our road begin like right here, okay? Where's the road gonna end? Final destination, then I'll come back to this one. Let's have it end right here. That's our final destination. So now I've got the size of the, the road. Let's make the first direction like, oh, I can't, I'll run out of room. Let's make it right this way, okay? So let me get my other marker. The first direction of the road is going to be like this. Okay, whoops. <laughs> and let's do another bend. Let's bend it. Let's bend it. No, I can't go any further that way. My direction can't go any further that way. Let's bend it pretty starkly over here. How about that? Another triangle. Okay, and let's do our last bend right about here. Right there. All right, so let's draw the road now. Now this, obviously, you can tell we've got kind of a, a bird's eye view with this one here. So there you have it, my five easy steps for creating roads. And of course, I just had to add some color to the mix. So I do a little demo here very quickly, just showing another road example, using some new pastels, adding a little bit of color. And also at the end of this little demo that I do here, you'll also see quite a few other sketches with the same technique of creating many more roads. So I'm gonna add some music. If you can't get enough of these road creations or you just like some more practice and some more ideas to go on, enjoy, keep watching. Oh, and please consider supporting me on Patreon. This is actually one of my Patreon lessons. For my patrons, I have something called PE on Fridays, patron education, I call it, but I decided to go ahead and make this video available to the Monet Cafe YouTube channel. And I love this channel because I really have a passion for bringing art to people who sometimes don't have the resources to be able to learn more. And also, if you're a patron of mine, you know this will be your homework assignment over the weekend, so I can't wait to see what your creations are. And for everyone else, happy painting. Please watch to the end of the video, though. I have lots more of these little road uh, demonstrations coming up. All right, guys, happy painting.